Today we're going to talk about a bait that most anglers don't necessarily fish correctly. Hi there, welcome to the Bass Fishing Life. I'm your host, Steve Rogers. Before we get in the video, hit that subscribe button and make sure you punch that notification bell so you get all our updates on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Thank you so much. Well, today we're gonna to talk about a bait that's been around for a long time and it's been very popular in probably the last decade or so, but a lot of anglers do not utilize this bait to its maximum potential. You may be wondering what bait is that? Well, it's a lipless crankbait. Now this here is actually a sales rep ring from when I was a rep and it's a color ring. I just wanted to show you this because I think it is super cool and I, I just hang on to it because I love it so much. But a lipless crankbait has been around for many years. When I was a kid, I used to throw a rattle trap all the time. One of the original lipless crankbaits many, many years ago in Smoky Joe color. Caught so many fish on it. And this particular one is a big sample ring of red eye shads, which has been very popular in recent years. A lot of anglers are using these all the time. And if you take a close look at this, you can see that this particular style of lipless crankbait is very different than maybe what you threw a couple of decades ago, specifically a traditional rattle trap body style. This particular bait often gets fished not to its maximum potential. And that's what we are going to go over today. I'm gonna to hop up on the front deck of the boat and we're gonna talk about two different retrieves that are gonna make this bait something that's gonna catch you a whole lot more fish. Okay, we're up here on the front deck of the boat and most of us, when we have fished a lipless crankbait over the years, especially with previous body styles, the way we've done it is just a steady retrieve just like this. This has caught fish over the years. It will catch fish and I can fish this particular bait like this all day long and I'm gonna get some bites. But that is not how this particular lure was designed to be fished and we're not using it to its maximum potential. You may have noticed with this body style difference that it has a thicker back and a slender belly to it and it is also balanced really, really well. The nose is wider and the tail is narrower as well. This bait is meant to flutter, drop and flutter and it'll come down just like this. It'll nose down and flutter down. And most of the bites with this particular body style are going to be on that drop or that flutter. And then when you continue your retrieve, that's when you're gonna feel the weight to it. It's very similar to a jerk bait in a lot of sense. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and cast it out there and I'm gonna let it sink all the way down to the bottom no matter what type of bottom composition I have, rocks, grass, mud, sand, whatever, shell beds, it works great in all those scenarios. Probably the one situation that doesn't work really well is if you're fishing a lot of downed timber, it probably wouldn't be my first choice. But I get it down here to the bottom, and then I want to reel it at a speed where I maintain contact with the bottom, and every time I tick the bottom or tick vegetation or tick a shell bed then I'm going to go ahead and just give it a little bit of a pop and then let it get back down there and hit the bottom again so that bait is coming down to the bottom touching it I'm skipping it forward touching the bottom that's exactly the type of retrieve that I want so let me go ahead and put it out there again gonna let it sink all the way down Watch that line go down, and on the drop, it's working for you. It's fluttering down to the bottom. It hits. I'm going to go ahead and reel. I haven't hit bottom. There I ticked bottom. Going to go ahead and pop it off of there. You don't have to reel this bait super fast. You want to be maintaining contact with that bottom composition and pop it. Okay, 
All right, so let me go ahead and go out the other side of the boat here where we got a little bit shallower of a flat coming across it. Gonna let it sink down. And now I'm gonna start to reel it. And as soon as I feel it hit, this is a half ounce model. As soon as I feel it hit, I'm gonna pop it loose. Let it hit again, pop it loose. And if you notice when I'm popping it loose, I'm popping it to the side. I want that bait to scoot forward. And if you feel it really ball up into some vegetation, you can go ahead and give it a pretty good yank. Well, and look at this. We ended up catching a turtle, which is not a good thing. So I will try to get this off of there. There the little guy is free and he probably has no idea what hit him. But he is back. Okay, so let's go ahead and put it out there again. Now, if you'll notice on the cast, this is a bait that you wanna cast this thing a long ways. Two reasons. One, you can, it cuts through the air really well. And two, it really comes down to probability. The longer your bait's in the water, the more likely you are to get a bite. So this is a bait that can be cast so far, you might as well get it out there and cover a lot more water with it. You're gonna find those fish, those schooling fish, where the action is going on. And if you're fishing a clearer water lake, you're going to be able to not spook them as much as if you were right on top of them. So really give that thing a long whip. Okay, the second retrieve starts off the same way. I'm going to let this bait go ahead and sink to the bottom. And then I'm going to fish it almost like a Carolina rig or a soft plastic. I'm just going to pull it. Reel up the slack, gonna pull it, reel it up the slack. And it's really essentially a very similar to retrieve to what I was doing before, but it is slower. And I'm letting it sit down there just a second. I'm not constantly reeling it. So there is more of just a kick off the bottom, flutter down. Kick off the bottom, flutter down. And you're gonna feel everything that you come across. And this particular method here is probably one that catches about more fish than anything else. Let it get out there, let it sink, and then just sweep it, reel up the slack, sweep it, reel up the slack. So I'm letting it sink down again. Okay, it's down there. I'm gonna sweep it, give it a good little sweep, reel up the slack. And I make sure every time it gets to the bottom, it maintains that contact to the bottom. Now this is also a lure that you can fish the same places that you would fish a deep diving crankbait, um, 15, 20 foot of water. But in that situation, the half ounce model is not gonna be your best choice. Jumping up to a three quarter ounce will definitely be better in that situation. But you can fish this in really deep water as well. Just a little bit of vegetation out here. It's getting to be kind of mid-fall where you can see there's some vegetation. Oh, just fell off right there. And that's what I'm doing. I'm kind of probing these last remnants of these weed beds out here. And this is a bait that gets reaction strikes. When that bait's on the bottom and it scoots up, Okay, the fish is like, whoa, man, what's going on? And they just react to it. And then that flutter down is just such a deadly, deadly action. The fall is an excellent time to fish a lipless crankbait. Um, a lot of anglers like to fish them in the spring as well. But it, the reason it's so good in the fall because you can cover a lot of water quickly. And that's the key to fall fishing. A lot of us in our Facebook group have talked about how it seems like the bite just boom, just quits, it's gone. And this bait can help you find those fish quicker than let's say fishing some other stuff. Now, if you want to, once you find a school, go ahead and slow down and throw something else, you sure can. But a lipless crankbait is a great way to locate fish because I can cover so much water. 
So once again, our two retrieves are both going to start with letting it sink all the way to the bottom. I'm out here pretty deep now. Let it sink all the way down. And then on this first retrieve, I'm going to reel it at whatever speed is necessary to maintain contact with the bottom. And then when I hit, I'm going to pop it free and keep it reeling. Hit, pop it free, keep it coming. So that is retrieve number one. And retrieve number two, let me show you again. Once again, get it way out there. And retrieve number two, once again, let it sink, flutter down, all the way down there to the bottom. It's gonna maintain its balance. And once it's on the bottom, I'm going to side sweep it very much like a Carolina rig presentation. Okay, so it's down, gonna side sweep it, reel it up, and I'm just gonna keep sweeping it like this. And the key with both retrieves is to maintain bottom contact. I hope that these couple of tips on fishing a lipless crankbait, especially in this red eye shad style or body style, will help you put more fish in the boat. Hey, and don't forget to get out there and encourage somebody today. You never know how you're going to change their life. For the Bass Fishing Life, I'm your host, Steve Rogers.